Mr. Speaker, the bill amends the Money Laundering Pre Prevention Act, Cap 1220, which cons consolidates the law governing money laundering and related matters, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, these days we hear quite a bit of discussion on money laundering, on financial crime, etc., Mr. Speaker. And that, and many, and in, on many situations, Mr. Speaker, our islands are, the playing field is not level, Mr. Speaker. It's not level at all in that what we are called to do sometimes, our rich and better and bigger neighbor, neighbors in the north, Mr. Speaker, not have to follow the same stringent laws, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, as they say, when you're small, you say in Patua, you are Wavet Duvapul. So, since you are Wavet Duvapul, Mr. Speaker, you must follow all the rules, you must follow all the regulations, Mr. Speaker. If not, you are going to get blacklisted. If not, you're going to be put on all kinds of lists, green lists, black lists, all kinds of lists, Mr. Speaker. And your whole financial infrastructure is going to be damaged. In fact, Mr. Speaker, one of the biggest threats that face us in small islands is the threat of the risking, where we will not be able, if we do not follow all these rules and regulations, we will not be able to use the international check clearing system. And that would mean our whole enterprise. It means you will not be able to use your credit cards. It means you will not be able to send money through the, the SWIFT system if we do not ensure that all these rules and regulations that is set for us, we meet them, Mr. Speaker. Sometimes at great cost, sometimes at great expense, and sometimes at great inconvenience, Mr. Speaker. Because as we speak about this bill, it's so difficult for some boy to open a bank account in, in, in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. The banks, because of the fear of the risking, they ask for so many, so many steps before bank account can be opened, Mr. Speaker. And young people, regular people, cannot. They suffer because it's very difficult to open a bank account in St. Lucia because the banks fear the risking and because of all the money laundering situations that may exist, Mr. Speaker. So this, this bill, Mr. Speaker, this amendment to this bill is for us to meet the request or the Financial Action Task Force, Mr. Speaker. The Financial As Action Task Force is an intergovernmental body that sets international standards that aim to prevent money laundering, terrorist financing, financing other criminal conduct, Mr. Speaker. The Financial Action Task Force reviews money laundering and terrorist financing techniques and continuously strengthens the standards to address new risks. As such recommendations, the FATF promotes a coordinated global response to prevent activities that threaten the integrity of the international financial system, Mr. Speaker. And St. Lucia is a member of the Caribbean, the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, which is an, an organization of states and territories of the Caribbean Basin that promotes the implementation of the Financial Action Task Force, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in St. Lucia, the National Anti-Money Laundering Oversight Committee, which is called NAMLOC, which comprises the Attorney General's Chambers, the Financial Intelligence Authority, the Authority and other stakeholders, manages Caribbean Financial Action Task Force related matters, and is responsible for coordinating national anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing activities. The CFATF in, collab collab in collaboration with other stakeholders, including NAMLOC, undertook an, an assessment to determine the degree to which St. Lucia complied to FATF recommendations, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and after this evaluation, Mr. Speaker, it shows that there are some deficiencies and there's a lack of specific provisions regarding the treatment of a person's own proceeds of criminal conduct, self-wondering, and verifying customer identity. 
as a result the Money Laundering Prevention Amendment Act of number 16 of 2021 was passed to address these deficiencies. However, however, however Mr. Speaker, in a continued effort to satisfy the recommendations and in particularly the deficiencies highlighted above, the authorities submitted instructions for further amendments to the Act by Memoranda 9th and 4th February 2023 and 6th and 41st January 20, 20, 2023 and 19th December 2022 and 40th November 2022 and 22nd June 2022. And these are the recommendations that these are the amendments, the amendments we are making today, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the bill amends the act to modify existing definitions and introduce new definitions for terms used in the bill. The bill also substitutes the, defin the definition of applicant for business to correct a spelling error. The act is amended by the bill to address the adequacy of the sanctions. As a result, the bill increases the penalty for a financial institution or person engaged in other business activity which fails to comply with a direction given under the Act. Further, the bill also increases the penalty of a financial institution that fails to comply with specific sections of the Act. So you see, Mr. Speaker, that is why the, the banks are, are creating so much difficulty for people if they want to do, if, when they want to do some of their le legitimate business, Mr. Speaker. The bill strengthens the customer identity measures under the Act by requiring verification of customer identity for transactions of less than 10,000 United States dollars or its Caribbean, Caribbean dollar equivalent. And Mr. Speaker, I want to make that clear. The Act says that once you are depositing less than 10,000 US dollars, the bank should accept it, Mr. Speaker. 10,000 US, that is the law. The banks cannot be masters of, can create their own laws, Mr. Speaker, to further put pressure on local people, Mr. Speaker. 10,000 US dollars or 27,000 EC dollars, Mr. Speaker, can be deposited in the bank without any identity or without any source of funds, Mr. Speaker. That is what the law says. The law says so. The law also serves to protect the banks, Mr. Speaker, but the law must be observed. The bill extends the scope of responsibility of financial institution and a person engaged in the business in business activity, Mr. Speaker, under the Act, to reporting a suspicious transaction or attempted suspicious transaction relating to terrorist financing and population financing, Mr. Speaker. For the meeting, the scope of the Act is extended in the bill to, em to the emergent area of virtual asset business, which is recognized globally, and for the, the enactment of the Virtual Asset Business Act Number 24 of 2022 as an area that is susceptible to money laundering. As a result, a virtual asset business is required to conduct customer due diligence with respect to certain specified financial transactions, Mr. Speaker. For the mitigation of risks, the bill amends the act to require that a financial institution or person engaged in other business activity must undertake additional measures with respect to politically exposed persons. And that's we inside it, Mr. Speaker. We inside it. We are called politically exposed persons, PEP. And Mr. Speaker, you know we and our spouses, Mr. Speaker. You know, sometimes you can put $5 in the bank. That's where you get the $5 from. Uh, yeah. Mr. Speaker, it is sometimes I know why people don't get involved in politics. Because you led your life all the time. You made your money. You were in your business. But all in a sudden, because you go for elections, you become a, a pep. Not a pep, a pep. <coughs> a politically exposed person, Mr. Speaker. And if you want to get a loan, you are scrutinized. If you want to, anything you do, you are scrutinized. Plus the fact, you have to deal with propaganda and lies from the opposition. Plus the fact, Mr. Speaker. So, 
But that is the law, and that is the law. That is how we have to follow, Mr. Speaker. So there are further measures to deal with what they call politically exposed persons, Mr. Speaker. The Bill amends the Act to spe specifically address the matter of self-laundering. As a result, a person is prohibited from handling property, rep from handling property representing his or her criminal conduct, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Bill amends the Act to empower the authority to provide mutual legal assistance with respect to terrorist financing and profilation financing. The Bill amends the Act to provide that the authority is exempt from the payment of taxes, etc., Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this is the amendment to the bill that we are proposing, Mr. Speaker, all to avoid St. Lucia from being blacklisted, Mr. Speaker, to avoid our banks, to help avoid our banks from, from, being, from experiencing the risk, Mr. Speaker. And whereas we know, we know that the playing field is not level, Mr. Speaker. As I said before, we are Wavet Duvapool. We are Wavet Duvapool. And these organizations, these bodies, they want more and more from us every step of the way, Mr. Speaker. And every time we try to liberate ourselves by doing something that will give us some level of income, some level of revenue, Mr. Speaker, there are blockade. There is blockade, Mr. Speaker. In the Citizens by Investment Program, there are major, major, all we've said to all and sundry, come and see what we're doing. Come and see what we're doing, Mr. Speaker. But the problem still arises, Mr. Speaker. Um, so, Mr. Speaker, we are trying, we will comply with all the regulations, we will, we will comply with all the amendments that, that are required, Mr. Speaker, because we want to protect our financial system, we want to protect our payment system, Mr. Speaker, so we will comply. But I urge the banks to find ways and means, Mr. Speaker, of making it easier for the customers, particularly when it comes to the setting up of accounts, Mr. Speaker. People want to open accounts. It is too difficult in this environment, Mr. Speaker. And also, on that same note, Mr. Speaker, I want to say to the people of, of St. Lucia, these restrictions that seem to be imposed upon them are not of our own doing. We have to follow international financial architecture. If not, we are going to be blacklisted and our whole financial system may collapse. And that has happened in the region. They are, and th this is not new. This may happen. It's happened to some countries in the region that we remain unnamed, Mr. Speaker. There are certain countries in the region where its whole payment system collapsed one day. It was closed, the whole payment system. And to, for the country to meet its debts, money had to be put in, in a helicopter and brought up over to the United States to pay the debts, Mr. Speaker, because the payment system was disrupted. So, Mr. Speaker, I urge members to support this amendment, Mr. Speaker, because it's basically to keep us in the financial, international financial architecture. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.